This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and look at the next chapter of the framework, which is all about making information useful, to which the framework gives it the title, your qualitative characteristics. And again, when you're preparing financial statements, when you're developing new accounting standards, you need to ensure there that the accounting standards and the financial statements reflect these qualitative characteristics. The way in which the qualitative characteristics are split is twofold. We look at the fundamental and the enhancing qualitative characteristics. Uh, so from financial accounting, they've hardly changed. They're exactly the same as what they were before, bar a tiny little element that we'll point out in a moment. Uh, and in financial accounting, you needed to go through there and learn the definitions. Here, it's more a case of the application of the definition to particular accounting standards. So here, remember, uh, relevance and faithful information are the fundamental qualitative characteristics. Uh, and relevance is something that makes a difference. OK. So it impacts the decisions made by the user. So whether that's an investing decision, a financing decision, uh, a decision about voting rights. Now, I remember things are material by nature or by materiality. Uh, so materiality, we're talking about the size of the transaction. If it's small, if it's immaterial, we don't include it within the financial statements. OK, so some of the accounting standards go through there and say we do not discount back to present value if the impact of discounting is not material. Again, we're trying to make it more relevant to the users of the accounts. Again, by nature, effectively there is looking at the directors, uh, transactions with directors, and that brings in, if you like, things such as related parties. Okay. But again, related parties aren't on the financial reporting syllabus. Uh, financial, oh, sorry, faithful information. Uh, so this is where there's been two subtle changes. So here, uh, that's where we bring in, again, the word substance. And also, as well, uh, measurement uncertainty. So everything else is the same. Uh, so we need to ensure there that it is complete. Uh, so that's, if you like, not just thinking about it complete numerically from a quantitative perspective, but also qualitative. So ensuring there that there are notes to the accounts to help support the number on the face of the financial statements, whether that's just a breakdown of the numbers, like within property plans and equipment and your disclosure note, breaking down the cost and accumulated depreciation, or whether it's more of a narrative element with regards to contingent liabilities, contingent assets uh, being disclosed within the financial statements. Uh, also, uh, it needs to be neutral. Uh, so ensuring there that there's no bias, uh, that you're exercising judgment. And we need to ensure there, and this is where prudence is brought back in, uh, we need to make sure that we are prudent with regards to our recognition of assets and liabilities, uh, whereby if we anticipate a loss, it's prudent to recognise that loss now. So we see that with an IFRS 15 and revenue and loss making contracts. Similarly, within provisions and is it the your onerous contracts? But then with regards to recognising your assets, uh, it's not prudent to recognise an asset unless you control that asset. So again, contingent assets, we don't recognise, but we disclose them, don't we? Uh, we need to make sure as well that it's free from error. Again, when we're looking at free from error, it's ensuring that it's free from material error. Uh, measurement uncertainty, clearly, if there's uncertainty with regards the value that we're going to include, uh, we need to make sure that we are including it that gives useful information to the users. If not, then that's going to lead the user to make incorrect decisions. So therefore, if there is measurement uncertainty, it, it's just worth noting, therefore, uh, that it is going to impact what you record within those financial statements. But again, that then links back by now giving more defined areas of measurement to try and reduce that level of measurement uncertainty. Because remember, uh, we need to make sure things are free from error within the financial statements. That's getting the numbers, if you like, materially accurate, 
So we need to make sure that the measurement is, is correct. Uh, the second element is looking at your enhancing qualitative characteristics. Uh, here, the, the, there's nothing different at all in the days of financial accounting. So comparability, when we're looking at one year to the next, uh, we're also when we're comparing one entity to the other, the framework goes through there and ensures that we're using financial reporting standards, IFRSs, IISs that are prepared on a consistent basis using this framework so that we can make that comparison. Uh, verifiability, uh, we just need to make sure that what we are showing represents what it is meant to. So particularly with regards to leases, you know, we may not own the assets, but uh, we can verifiably show that we have control and therefore it is representing an asset whereby we have control and effectively in substance, it is our asset. Again, bear in mind timeliness. Uh, so again, the longer it takes to get the information, the less useful, the less relevant it is. So start thinking about your evaluations. You know, the idea behind the revaluations, we can't wait until the asset is sold to get the value of the asset. We have to make an estimate of it now, don't we? But that estimate needs to be faithfully represented uh, and it needs to be relevant. So if there's small changes in the value, that's not relevant. If there's a large change in the value that is relevant, we need to make sure that we are using a consistent measurement basis so that there is no measurement uncertainty. The understandability is just ensuring there that the users of the account actually understand what we're doing. Uh, we're not saying that they need to have a, a detailed understanding of the IFRSs and IISs, but they have a reasonable knowledge of the business uh, and a fundamental understanding of financial reporting and what the financial statements are trying to show, what the notes are trying to disclose as well. And that's why we put the notes in to be able to assist the understandability for the users of the accounts. The, the numbers by themselves are pretty worthless. It's what goes behind it that will then help the users of the accounts. And then finally, just note, uh, it talks about that cost constraint. Uh, effectively, it's saying, look, don't spend too much money uh, trying to get the most up-to-date information because the amount of money that you then spend getting that information in is probably going to be outweighed by the benefits of getting it in and representing it within the financial statements. So bear in mind uh, the cost benefit element of the information within the financial statements. If you're going to spend, there needs to be a big benefit. But if you're spending a lot and there's no benefit, then don't enter into it in the first place. OK, so that's all about your qualitative characteristics. We'll see an example a little bit later that brings in some of those qualitative characteristics with regards to the application. We've spoken a little bit about it as we've gone along with regards to some of the standards on provisions, uh, related parties, PPE and revaluation. Don't worry, we'll see it more and more detail as we go along through the notes.